Greetings, salutations, respect, and love. I am Scott, and you are in the Prague Corner, and today I'm not in my studio because I just tore it up and dipped. So we're going to do it out here in the listening room, and today we are going to name the most valuable Prager of 2022. Now, last year, I had Kimo Porsti from uh, the uh, Samurai of Prague as my Prager of the year, my MVP. The year before that, it was Mike Portnoy. So who is it going to be this year? Boy, oh boy, I don't know. But I got a couple records I need to talk about. You know, this time of year, they were flooded with so much greatness that sometimes some things definitely slip through the cracks. And I tried to take care of that a little bit by having a tie at number 25 Monday, uh, slipping Verbal Delirium in there. What a great record that is. But there's a couple other ones that I forgot. Doll, Daedalus. I had that on my uh, best albums of 2022 so far episode and it slipped off and I totally forgot about it. What a great band. Their seventh album of instrumental prog from Italy. Yeah, they take their cues from Scando Prague, but it's just great stuff. Here's another one. I had every intention of putting this in my top 25, and I totally forgot about it. And I got called out. The great Greco Bastian uh, commented and said, Hey, man, where's my record? Very good question. It should have been there with a little help for my friends. I thought it was just a couple tracks on that record I liked. I actually love the whole thing. It's just phenomenal. Uh, another band that dropped a brand new album, their sophomore record. This is Gurunfo uh, and Gumbo Gumbo. They play instrumental prog with bass, drums, and guitar with little flute, little sax. Kind of jazzy. Really great stuff. Another one I wanted to talk about real briefly is De Rossi e Bordini. These are two guys that were in Cherry 5. Uh, Bordini was in Cherry 5 back in the 70s. De Rossi was in the uh, remake version. This is kind of like Patrick Mraz and Bill Bruford where you just got keyboards and drums, but it's phenomenal. And the fifth and final record I want to talk about real quick. Thank you, Scott Medina from Sonic Perspective for setting me straight on this one. It's Cosmograph and uh, Heroic Materials. I've listened to it a couple of times. Scott called me out. How come that wasn't on your honorable mentions or your top 25? I listened to it again last night. He's right. It should have been there. My bad. Let's go over what we did with the best in Prague these last couple weeks. The best song, song of the year, Chrysalis by Rio Okamoto off the Myth of the Mastrophus. What a phenomenal song sung by the great Randy McStein. Incredible. Best epic goes to JPL Memento Mori. That is side two of his brand new Sapiens Part 3 Uh Phenomenal, phenomenal track broken up into five different sections. I love it. Best live album. You guys voted Steve Hackett Genesis Revisited Live, Seconds Out and More. And I couldn't, uh, I couldn't agree with you guys more. Just phenomenal. Best album cover. This is a new category I'm going to add. Uh, I'll get your input for 2023. So I'm just picking this one. And it's The Flower Kings by Royal Decree. The great Colorado artist Kevin Sloan had already done a sleep for them, Waiting for Miracles. And uh, he's getting some attention now because the brand new Haken's going to be a sport and a sleeve by Kevin Sloan. Just amazing. Reissue of the year. Best reissue. You guys voted. And it was a landslide. Pink Floyd Animals. Absolutely. Fantastic call. It sounds even better than it did back in 78. Just phenomenal. Best debut album. Yeah, I left this off my top 25 on purpose just to make room for one more, but it clearly deserves recognition. It's Birth and their debut album, Born. Is it a debut album? Yeah, it is. But, you know, these two guys were in Astra, so it really does feel a lot like that great San Diego band. Phenomenal. So we've come to the moment of truth. The final award given out in 2022. Most valuable progger. Who's it going to be? Well, you know... I had a few people on my short list. Uh, ben Craven was certainly somebody I thought of right away and that his music went from here to here just like real, real fast. I thought about JPL, uh, but that's a personal thing. I just love Jean-Pierre Louboutin so much. Maybe not everybody does, so maybe not. Rio Okamoto dropped an incredible solo album this year. He deserves some uh, some 
you know, contemplation and some consideration here. Absolutely. I also thought about uh, Royna Stalt, uh, Greg Spotton for soldiering on and keeping Big Big Train alive. And that also applies to Nick DiVirgilio, who was also active doing the uh, Troika album with Neil Morris and Jennings Ross, Ross Jennings. <laughs> and he also was in that great Rio Okamoto uh, Myth of the Mastrophus album. So yeah, Nick DiVirgilio definitely needs uh, some consideration. But I am not going to have three drummers in a row. It's not going to be three years in a row with a drummer winning MVP. Tell you right now, is it Steve Howe? Should he be most valuable progger, keeping Yes alive, keeping the prog flames going? Well, if you're thinking about Steve Howe, you really need to think about Steve Hackett. Talk about keeping the prog flames burning bright. Yeah, and yeah, Nick DiVirgilio again, he's on tour with uh, Steve Hackett right now. Yeah, I'm sorry, Nick. It's not your year this year. There can only be one MVP, and it is Steven Wilson for bringing Porcupine Tree back. Thank you. Obviously, you are 2022's most valuable progger. Anyway, I love you guys. Have a great holiday season. I don't know what I'm going to be doing the rest of the year. <coughs> I might take a little time off. Who knows? Who knows what I'm up to? But anyway, I love you guys. God save the king and Princess Charlotte because she's just too adorable. See you guys soon.